Hi. Um, Japan is considered to be one of the most innovative countries in the world. But I have a bad news and a good news. The bad news is that the innovation in Japan has been misplaced. We've been focusing on the wrong things. But the good news is that we are now in a better position than ever to focus on things that matter and innovate where it counts. We've been busy inventing things like this. <laughs> a toilet that plays music. Or this, the fridge with internet access. <laughs> or a smartphone with 13 megapixel digital camera, as opposed to 10. And I have no doubt that these are very, very interesting products. And there's a lot of creativity and energy that went into designing them. But I want to ask you, do they really make your life better? Do they really matter? I argue that they don't. I've always thought that Japan should use this tremendous reserve of creativity to solve the problems, uh, the bigger problems that facing the world today, the problems of poverty, the climate change, and natural and man-made disasters, the problems that affect the large portion of humanity and our collective future. It is our responsibility to solve them. So it was quite early on in my life that I became passionate about doing my part, small part, in tackling these issues. So it was quite natural that I came to dream of working with the United Nations. Fast forward several years, my dreams came true, and I found myself on a plane to Timor-Leste, then the newest democracy in the world. I spent two years there and moved on to other assignments in Indonesia and Sierra Leone. And I was really privileged to work on a number of critical initiatives ranging from organizing the presidential elections to tsunami response in Aceh in Indonesia. And it was this time I also got to see many development projects funded by Japan. As you know, Japan is one of the largest donors in foreign aid, spending billions of dollars. And there are many, many great projects. And yet, I can't help but compare the degree of innovations taking place to meet the needs in the rich countries, including Japan, and the innovation to tackle the problems in the developing countries. It's like night and day. Or we say in Japanese, it's like the moon and the turtle. Tikito suppon. And it is not only Japan which is guilty of this. It's actually a challenge of the aid industry as a whole. So I personally wanted to do something. And and then started this organization called uh, Copernic. The Copernic um, is a technology marketplace that brings life-changing technologies to where they are most needed. And these technologies are quite simple. For example, this is a Q-drum that can transport 50 liters of water in one go instead of making many trips to fetch the same amount of water. All this, the people with hearing difficulties in the developing countries had to replace the batteries every week. And this device, using the power of the sun, can reduce the financial and logistical burden on the hearing impaired. And this is a solar light that replaces expensive, dangerous uh, uh, kerosene lamps. And 
we've been disseminating these life-changing technologies to the countries in Asia and Africa and the Caribbean. And something unexpected happened. In 11th of March, the devastating earthquake and tsunami hit the Tohoku area, and soon after, I started to receive numerous requests for the very same technologies to be sent to the affected area. So, in response, we delivered over 2,500 solar lights and solar hearing aids. I really never thought that these technologies, designed specifically for the developing countries, would be needed in my affluent country, Japan. And behind this, there was a lot of interesting things happening. There's tremendous support coming from the developing countries to the affected area. And the support was not only financial or material, but also a moral one. And this was a very, very humbling experience, I think. And that has resulted in the transformation in the relationship between the people in Japan and people in the developing countries. We now understand firsthand what it is like to live, to lose everything, and to live in a very difficult situation. But at the same time, we now understand the enormous potential there. And I think this understanding, this new level of understanding or empathy, was the missing ingredient. We had the creativity, but we didn't have this understanding. But now we do have it, and combined, we can start making things that do matter. And in a very, very small way, we have started this process. We started a competition, and we invited a number of Japanese engineers and designers to go to the developing countries, find their own problems, and come up with simple solutions. And the, we sent them to, to, to Timor-Leste, and they, they spent time with the local families in a rural area. And from this dialogue, they came back with many, many ideas. And one of the groups came up with this kickboard that kids can play and at the same time generate much-needed electricity and transport water. And another group uh, is producing a bicycle that can cool down the life-saving vaccine. And there are many more new ideas. And I'm very happy and excited because they are presenting their final product tomorrow in Roppongi. So we have all the ingredients. We have the creativity, we have the new understanding and empathy, and we should transform this into a powerhouse of innovation that truly matters. Innovation that improves the life of people and lifts them out of poverty and support the victims of the natural and man-made disaster. Tell me if that is not more important than an extra megapixel in your smartphone. Thank you. <laughs>